The action is kicking off. A cone already taken down on lap one at Laguna Seca. There are absolutely gargantuan spiritual punishments for that. That's right, Mark. They say that for every cone you take out, you lose a young life, a firstborn in your bloodline. I'm not going to be able to verify that one, Jeff, but coming into turn four, car number 11 on the oh, throttle, no. and it looks like he has just sent yeah. car number four around. After what we've seen from this guy this season, Mark, it's not too big of a surprise. No, and oh the, my. The car ahead was it, loose oh, there, he's but. He's done it again. That's the same drive. Driver, same thing. Let's let's uh, hop on board and see what's going on. Is, is this the right? That, that is not. No, is the right guy. It's not the guy on the schedule. This is the card, this is the track, and this is exclusive footage of the crickets past 5 p.m. in my garage. As soon as the sun gets moderately low. We are back in rookies, starting in P4 as car number six, the 36.7, way off, a second off of P1, but honestly not that far off of P2 or three. We're rocking the Wendy's livery. We've got nine laps of Laguna Seca ahead of us, one of my favorite tracks, and this is one of my favorite cars. I don't show it much, but I absolutely love the Miata. Off to a great start, starting in P4, kind of getting on the outside of P3. That's car number 10, a nice little gap behind this as well, so we're not really under pressure of losing a position here. Gonna look to go around the outside way too deep there. Think just a bit too light on my brakes, and uh, you can absolutely make it work around the outside there. You have to hold that car tight, though. If you go too, too deep, the shorter distance traveled of the inside line is basically going to allow them to slot in front on the exit. Maintaining P4, we've got Cody right behind us. That's P5, about two tenths behind us. And something you'll notice about these races is that it is extremely hard to drop somebody. Like, to purely outpace somebody in the Miata is very difficult because the straights on this track, although not like the longest in the world, in this car, they feel extremely long. Although, as I say that, Campbell Evan is already 1.2 seconds ahead of us. The guy behind is literally on our exhaust pipe into the super fast left-hander that leads up to the corkscrew. And that's typically a corner, you know, people might have a look at, but nobody's really ever going to send it up the inside there or try and make that too wide. It's basically basically a death sentence. <clears throat> Remember that it'll come into play later in this video through the corkscrew for the first time. I'm going down to first gear in this video. This was my first race of the week and uh, I hadn't quite figured out the corkscrew yet. Definitely a second gear corner if you roll enough speed through and it helps you massively on the exit through the penultimate corner, eating up all of that camber and getting a pretty good run out of there. Close enough to probably look for a dive, but I'm not going to go for it. Instead, I'm going to run into the back of the car ahead. Just a light touch, zero times, so no actual incident going on there. And we did manage to uh, separate ourselves a little bit from the car behind. I'm not quite sure how that happened. Maybe car two was having a look. Whatever the case was, the car ahead is now keeping an extremely defensive line. It looks like the mystery machine going around the outside at the Andretti hairpin does it much, much better than I did on a uh, lap one one, but it's still not quite enough. You really have to stay alongside all of the way through there and claim the space into that next series of corners. Meanwhile, we're in a very good spot here, riding in P4 about half of a second away from P3, who is going to make a bit of an error, sliding through the uphill left-hander that's going to head towards that super fast downhill left-hander under the bridge. We're soaking up slipstream, gained a couple of tenths there, and behind, car number four is still going slightly defensive against the mystery machine, ends up going a bit wide there due to a narrow defensive entry, and they're going to go too wide into the corkscrew possibly mystery machine has the inside is he going to look for it lighter on the brakes initially finds the space ahead of him and completely clear before they even get to the corner great racing by him there's enough of a gap between myself and the mystery machine at the moment that i'm not under too much pressure i would have to make a couple of mistakes i do have more slipstream relative uh to felipe behind so i should be able to pull away or hopefully maintain that gap if myself and the cars ahead all drive pretty cleanly already not looking the greatest from myself or the car ahead in P3, not fantastic exits. I didn't quite see car number two's exit there, but I can promise you it was probably better than mine. By the time lap number four comes around, the space is kind of even and out ahead and behind. And heading into turn number five, not quite sure what got into my head. Something was definitely in my head though. I broke a bit early there, completely missed the apex initially, and I kind of cut back. I try and salvage that corner. It's it, I mean, it wasn't a huge mistake, but it was enough that I am starting to feel under pressure. You can see me breaking into that fast left hand or two, which isn't really optimal. If you do it correctly, you don't really lose any time, but uh, it's not going to help you gain any best case scenario. 
Now, that was a lapped car on the side, so neither of us gained a position from that. He was just kind of, I'm not sure what his story was, but he was in the desert driving slow up that hill. Not my problem. He didn't affect us. Uh, my problem is that car number two is now pretty convincingly on my ass. One tenth behind me. I'm slowly falling off of P3, making some mistakes. I think the pressure was getting to me. And uh, this is something that I definitely have to work on. It's why I'm doing these Miata races. If you've been following my time attack series, I'm competing for a real life seat. However, that opportunity is completely dependent on me having an extremely good finish in a Miata race in about two months time. Lap number five comes around. We are under heavy fire here. Heading into the Andretti hairpin, I'm opening up the corner as if there's nobody behind me. He is welcome to take that space and he's gonna do it. I'm holding him tight all of the way through, door banging through both apexes of that corner, not allowing him to open up that exit and slide ahead, keeping him extremely tight. We both make that same little mistake on the, uh, on the exit, but it turns out honestly kind of in my favor. I'm just close enough to be side by side into corner number three gonna maintain it again a little bit of door banging there this is absolutely slowing us down we're losing p3 but my issue at the moment is keeping p4 and a bit of an aggressive move from myself there uh opening up that one basically missing that apex and instead of defending i opt to stay on the outside big mistake as car number four is jumping at the opportunity i give him room on the inside we're gonna be side by side heading into that corner earlier i was talking about you really don't go through too wide here if you do you just lose lose out to the opponent behind who probably gets both of you guys. I tried to give him space too wide. I thought he was going to back out. I felt like I was pretty substantially ahead going in there. Uh, lesson learned on board with the car behind. He tries to make this work. Props to him, I guess. Ends up hitting that curb, trying to give me too much space and the shit show ensues. There was definitely opportunities for both of us to avoid that. No excuse for that. I don't see him. I should have checked my relative or looked to the left. He obviously wasn't very happy about that, just kind of driving me into the wall. I back back out and let him through. It is what it is. It isn't great. Five laps in and we have damage. We're down to last place, just about second to last place. Our car is not steering straight. We're going to have to go into the pits and get that repaired. A lot of damage to the front end and as i go into the pits i actually see the uh car number two the mystery machine who was collected had damage as well he had to pit and that takes both of us out of this race eventually i did just kind of drive my laps out ended up finishing in p10 ahead of the mystery machine and some other poor soul now, should he have backed out? Probably. Could I have also backed out? Absolutely. I probably would have gotten a better run than him anyways and gotten that position back. Lesson learned. I'm going to therapy. I'm going to I'm gonna fix this trauma I have with turn number six. Next time, I'll back out, cross my heart, and hope not to die. Now, the best remedy for a terrible result is to run it back and try again. So starting in P3 this time with a slightly better qualifying time, Diego ahead, Grant behind, a fantastic launch for myself, a horrible one from Diego. He's going to pull over all of the way to the inside. I'm going to end up having to slow down, and that is going to give Grant behind the advantage. So it looks like we are going to be under fire into the Andretti hairpin on the first lap. We're on the inside, taking an aggressively narrow entry. That's going to send us slightly deep, which may have actually worked out in our favor it kind of forces Grant to go a little deeper as well and we slot ahead we're going to defend into corner number three not letting that one go trying to maintain p3 there's a car off in the distance there's actually a couple of cars off uh, in the distance so let's rewind back and briefly see what happened there car number 10 is who I'm looking at initially uh, however I don't think this was actually his fault car number 11 just runs into the back of this guy who was trying to avoid going off the track and car number 12 pays the ultimate price for that he has lost the front end of his car so he's out of the race and that also kind of separates the top seven from the bottom five I believe still slightly under fire from Grant he's two tenths behind us there's not really a major overtaking opportunity for him here unless he was he were to make an outrageous dive or I make a big mistake. So hoping that neither of those happen. Some slight counter steering there, which is kind of, I, I think is optimal for that corner when you're taking it at full pace. There should be a little bit of counter steering under braking, which seems to be a theme for this car in a lot of corners to really get a decent line through and also find the grip because like as you return the car to center after counter steering, it's like it finds the it, it, it just finds like maximum contact patch and helps you on exit into the corkscrew for the first time this race still using first gear i'm sorry that you guys have to watch that second gear as i said i'm an advocate for i wasn't doing it in this video uh just imagine that i am doing it because i don't want anybody to like pick up the habit of going into first gear there uh, from watching this it, it, it's not bad you can actually be competitive with first gear but i think second gear is consistently easier to stay 
closer to what's probably your optimum speed. Now already, the guy ahead is kind of gapping P2. He's, I think he's like six or seven tenths ahead, and Grant is under fire from car number six, so this is the battle for P4, and a battle may be a bit of a uh, aggressive word for this, because it wasn't really much of a battle, at least at this point. However, I do think that it was slightly in Grant's head that, you know, there could be some some sort of attack there. He messes up the Andretti hairpin. I'm fairly certain that was due to pressure or the, the, uh, the implication of pressure. Either way, I'm rooting for that battle to just go absolutely nuts behind me already from that slight mistake from Grant. It's kind of opened up the gap between myself and him by two or three tenths, which doesn't seem like a lot, but in Miata, it is. And if you can just have that happen four or five times to where they fall out of slip, that is where they're kind of like removed from your race. He's completely missed the apex on the penultimate corner. That is going to put him right back into the jaws of car number six, who is going to be hot on his tail. And I mean hot on his tail as they cross the final corner to start lap number three. He now has a ton of slipstream relative to Grant, who's probably, I mean, he, he's definitely picking up some speed from us, but it's not nearly as much as this guy is. What is the move here? Grant gonna defend the inside? It doesn't look like it. He actually opens it up, and car number six takes that opportunity to look up the inside. Very small amount of contact. Grant hitting a nice little drift. They're gonna exit too wide, and uh, contact once again on the exit is gonna slow down car number six, who's actually moving defensive against the car behind now, and that is the battle that is really going to open up that gap as we are still about three or four tenths off of the car ahead, so in a perfect little gap, and Grant behind us over a second. Now, that by no means means that we are completely safe. However, I understand that I really don't want to make any moves on this guy ahead because one or two corners side by side and Grant is going to be right back on our tail and I want to use this position to my full advantage. I know that there are people behind Grant trying to battle, so I'm just going to settle back a little bit put no pressure under P2, and hopefully we can pull away together from the rest of the grid. This is car number 11. This is the battle for P8, car number 11 and car number 9. End of lap number 3. 11 going to look up the inside. Massive dive here. 9 taking a very smart line there, going extremely wide, getting a fantastic exit, and look at the speed difference there. He's going to totally clear him before they even get to the start finish, and uh, 11 is going to pick up that slipstream once he moves ahead of him, but it you don't really have a choice as car number nine there. He wants to defend the inside. Is he going to? Not quite, but the speed of, well, up, okay. Yeah, I forgot about this. So he just, the <laughs> car number 11 just does not break, runs into the back of him. That caught me super off guard. Um, probably one of the more aggressive hunt to passes I have seen. I can't imagine nine is happy about that, but props to nine for not returning the favor and just continuing to drive. Uh, and drive clean, at least for those next couple of corners. Pretty often, when something like that happens, you'll see immediate retaliation. So, shout out to car number nine for that. Now, there are two cars behind these guys looking to battle as well. Car number nine peeking up the inside, trying to throw 11 offline. Not quite going to work. He backs out a bit earlier than maybe he could have. Uh, and he doesn't open up that corner for himself at all. It doesn't make too much of a difference, though, because car number nine has the benefit of slipstream. And 11 getting a bit on edge. They are completely disallowing himself to open up the run to the corkscrew and nine speed difference is massive he's ahead going into the corkscrew on the outside that's actually the inside for the exit of the corkscrew however it's the outside for the next corner and they make it work flawlessly huge ups to both of these guys especially after that punt to pass like to race that clean is just super nice to see Miata racing at its finest, 9 sliding back ahead pretty aggressively of 10 there. Into the penultimate corner, he's not letting it go yet, still side by side, that's going to affect both of their runs. Here comes 10, huge speed difference, he's trying to find room on the inside towards the final corner and making a bit of contact there, sending 11 deep and then collecting him on exit, he goes spinning like unrealistically fast and aggressively. This would never happen, I don't know what, like it looked like he got put on like a dim sum tray or something. Anyway, both of them are out of the race, so props to Nine. He got his position back and uh, did it did it really cleanly. I mean, overall, that battle wasn't super clean, but he drove cleanly. Lap number five, we're looking at the battle between Grant and car number six for P4. You can see us in the distance, that gap continuing to grow, and uh, lap number six comes around. This group is still all together. They've been together for the entirety of this race. 
and this is about the time where Durant completely loses my slipstream. So massive disadvantage here as they make the run up to the corkscrew. However, the advantage of slipstream doesn't matter if you get an atrocious exit, which car number six, not the best there, and seven is actually going to bump him, so not put him under pressure when he definitely had the opportunity to, and six, I don't know if he accounted for that extra speed, goes a bit deep, actually follows Grant deep, and Grant ends up going around. They both cut the track there. I'm going to show the onboard from the car uh, in the rear here, car number six. Very different lines upon entry. Both miss the apex. I, yeah, uh, this guy at car number six was apologizing in the chat for that, but um, I'm not going to make an end-all be-all call. That wasn't my race. My race is right here for P2. It's lap number six. We're about to cross onto lap number seven. Looking in my relative, I know something just went down and I'm seeing somebody apologize in the chat. Uh, about a four second gap to P4. This is our time. This is what we waited for. We're in a good spot. The car in P1 has just about dropped P2. There, there's still some slipstream going on there, like I said, but it just takes me kind of peeping up the inside, throwing this guy offline once and uh, he, he loses that completely. Now, we do still have three full laps left to go, but making a pass on this track can be fairly tricky. You can defend most of these corners successfully, or at the very least, kind of remain side by side for like two or three corners in a row and eventually try and fight for that position back. Basically, what I'm saying is the sooner, the better. I've got to make a move on this guy. And we're going to start that just by looking up the inside here slightly, showing in his mirror. He can see that like aggressive pull to the inside. May not really make that much of a difference, but it's just something, I mean, it's the least that I can do right now. I don't want him to be comfortable driving. It just takes one mistake from the leader and he is heavily back in slipstream. However, that is going to be a mistake from Diego. So it should close the gap up a little bit. We're about one tenth behind him heading into the corkscrew, lifting a bit early there as we don't want to run into the back of him, but we want to remove main hot on his tail looks like we've just about done that and my goal right now is to try and make a dive into that final corner if you can get the dive done correctly you can kind of neutralize the uh the car being dove's run so then you guys go side by side towards andretti and it turns into a two wide situation there we're on the inside we're gonna make the dive down to first gear hugging the inside he allows us way too much space there ends up actually oversteering his car a bit and we're basically side by side now. Lap number eight comes around. He's actually going to lift slightly and go behind us, try and soak up some slipstream. Is it really going to make that much of a difference? Not truly. I mean, I am all of the way on the inside. I am ridiculously defensive here. There is no reason for me to be that defensive. It actually opens up a better opportunity for him um, than if I had, you know, opened that up and given him as little space as possible. But he's not going to make the pass there. So we remain in P2 on the penultimate lap. It's going to be a defensive race. I understand that. I have no slipstream. He has all of it in the world. He has the advantage. I'm going to be defending corners left, right, and center. That's my goal. That was my mistake last race. I'm not letting it happen again. I don't think he's going up the inside here, and sure enough, he's not. I'm really pushing the limits on how late I could break there. However, I kind of cut off my exit. You can see I don't actually use all of that runoff on the right side. He's peeping up the inside. I'm putting my faith in him that he's not going to do that, and he doesn't. Thank God. No repeat of last time. My PTSD started to go off right there had he stayed there for a minute longer and i might have just driven straight off into the wall or pissed my pants probably both looking up the inside of just about every corner even the corkscrew he's showing right there that's going to kind of neutralize his run a little bit though and that's the disadvantage of trying to you know peep up on the inside sometimes you end up separating yourself a crucial two tenths maybe that keeps me safe at least until the final lap you can see that gap is still there he's soaking up the slipstream all of the way down the pitch straight moving to the outside once again i am staying extremely defensive not letting any opportunity open itself up for this guy remaining in front I'm fairly confident here. My plan is to defend every corner and the downside to that you're going to see in just a second. He's right behind me as we go through corner number four here. I mean, one tenth behind me. He is hot on my tail and I'm hugging the inside here. Similar to what I was saying about the Andretti hairpin, I'm way too far to the left side. I'm basically nullifying my run without damaging his whatsoever. Massive, beautiful... Oh, the switchback was so glorious there. I couldn't even be mad. We're side by side. I'm, my PTSD is kicking off. I'm backing out. I'm on the brakes. 
looking for a better exit, and it's not gonna matter. I mean, well, it's actually way better of an exit because he takes the exact same line as the car from last race, hitting the curb, sliding through. It's difficult to do on the inside there. I think the inside always has the disadvantage. Best case scenario for him there, he, he makes it through cleanly, but I have a much better run and I'm able to pass him or at least contest into the corkscrew. So I have no pressure still three seconds to the car behind so with all of that fighting we actually only lost one second pretty happy about that and we drive the rest of the race meme it on the start finish line sixth gear baby all of the way to the finish listen to that thing per sounds better than my car in real life which has so many issues p2 and the therapy paid off because i mean that that is exactly what my therapist told me to do next time back out Really satisfied with that finish, especially because the outcome was basically affected directly from what I learned in that first race. Gaining all of the I rating back that we lost, uh, losing safety rating, who cares about safety rating? Not me. If you guys enjoyed this video and want to support me, please check out some of my other videos and I'm sure you'll enjoy those as well.